There are telescopes searching the skies for signals, for hints, for a sign of civilizations, or even the signals from starships moving through the sky, you know, whatever it is. They are coming. They are coming for us all. For years, astronomers have been scratching their heads over the mystery of unexplained bursts of radiation coming from space. Some of these spikes occur on a yearly basis. 1988 saw the detection of a transitory signal in the Scutum constellation, located 15,000 light years away by radio telescopes. However, it went unreported for 30 years. Now, fast forward to the present day. The object has been rediscovered by astronomers, but it behaves differently than any other object that has been studied before. This new piece of evidence sheds light on the possible origins of the most outlandish signals we can possibly get. Do these strange repeating signals from deep space mean that aliens are listening to our messages and replying, or are they the result of starquakes? If they are from aggressive aliens, can we withstand their assaults? Join us as we explore how NASA just detected something massive in the oldest part of the universe. An unexplained burst of radio waves that took 8 billion years to reach Earth has been discovered by astronomers. It's one of the most intense and far-off radio bursts ever seen. FRBs, or fast radio bursts, are short, powerful blasts of radio waves whose origins are still a mystery. Since the first FRB was found in 2007, hundreds more of these brief cosmic flashes have been spotted from faraway locations. The FRB 2022-206-20A explosion lasted less than a millisecond, but in that short time, it produced as much energy as the sun does in 30 years. Fast radio bursts are challenging to observe since many of them emit extremely brilliant radio waves that linger for no more than a few milliseconds before vanishing. Astronomers have been able to track these brief cosmic bursts with the aid of radio telescopes like the ASCAP array in Western Australia's Wajari Yamaji country. Scientists also think they may have identified their location of origin. There is, however, a catch. They haven't been able to figure out what the bizarre spinning object that's been transmitting the signals actually is. However, they assume it might be an extremely slow-moving magnetar. The distance to the object, designated GPMJ183910, is roughly 15,000 light years. In circumstances such as these, the object will typically emit radio wave pulses approximately once every second. This is far too sluggish. Young, extremely magnetic neutron stars known as magnetars often rotate once every one to two seconds and emit brilliant X-rays. Occasionally, a small number, six out of the 30 known, emit radio waves for a few weeks to months at a time. Similar signals were previously sent out by another magnetar known as Gleam XJ1627 every 18 minutes, but it became silent after just three months in 2018. Scientists analyzed Gleam XJ1627 and concluded that this transient radio emission might explain our observations. This interpretation, however, is seriously challenged by GPMJ183910. They have seen it emitting strong radio bursts and have seen it with their own eyes using the highly sensitive X-ray satellite telescope XMM-Newton. They did not detect any X-rays, which would be expected if it were a magnetaire. Magnetaires haven't generally been active for decades, while GPMJ183910 has been emitting radio pulses since at least 1988. Another possible explanation for GPMJ183910 is that it is a highly magnetic white dwarf star, but we would not expect them to be so bright, albeit such stars are not often as bright. Strange radio transmissions have been picked up from space many times before. In May, researchers from the U.S. Department of Energy reported finding low-frequency infrasound transmissions from an unidentified origin. When we started flying balloons years ago, we didn't really know what we'd hear, 
Daniel Bowman of the Sandia National Laboratories said in a statement. We learned how to identify sounds from explosions, meteor crashes, aircraft, thunderstorms, and cities. But virtually every time we send balloons up, we find sounds that we cannot identify. The frequency of the signals picked up by the solar-powered balloons is too low for human ears to hear. The balloons, with a diameter of around 23 feet, travel at a height of roughly 12 miles. The balloons are just huge clear plastic bags with some black charcoal powder sprinkled inside. Their construction required charcoal powder from pyrotechnic supply stores, packing tape from the hardware store, and painter's plastic. The air inside the dark balloons warms up and becomes buoyant when exposed to sunlight. Using only the energy from the sun, the balloons may be lifted to an altitude of nearly 216,535 feet. Each balloon may be constructed in a basketball court for less than $50 in supplies. According to Bowman, the strange signals may be associated with a previously unreported form of atmospheric turbulence. However, further research and data are required before any farm conclusions can be drawn. To capture infrasound above Venus's surface, Bowman is working with NASA to develop solar-powered balloon technology. In 2022, research by MIT scientists revealed that alien life may exist in the clouds of Venus. The fact that Venus has a mean temperature of 867 degrees Fahrenheit and an atmospheric pressure of 92 times that of Earth presents a significant challenge to verify this notion. They'll need some pretty sturdy balloons to put that hypothesis to the test and record infrasounds high above Venus's surface. More so, in April, a coherent radio signal was detected coming from a distant exoplanet, implying that there could be exoplanets out there that are hospitable for extraterrestrial life. Maybe aliens have magnetic compasses. Scientists believe that these signals could be evidence of a magnetic field in this far-off world. Magnetic fields are critical for habitability since they shield planets from harmful cosmic radiation and charged particles, which can be detrimental to any potential life forms. Scientists from the U.S. National Science Foundation have picked up these intriguing radio signals from YZ SETI B, a rocky planet situated 12 light years away from Earth. YZ SETI B orbits a small red dwarf star known as YZ SETI. The signals, similar to Earth's aurora borealis, are thought to be caused by interaction between the planet's magnetic field and the star it circles. The search for potentially habitable or life-bearing worlds in other solar systems depends in part on being able to determine if rocky, Earth-like exoplanets actually have magnetic fields. This study not only demonstrates the existence of a magnetic field around this rocky exoplanet, but also suggests a viable strategy for discovering other such worlds. Approximately 1,100 miles below a planet's surface is its outer core, where superheated, churning liquid iron generates magnetic fields similar to Earth's. Convection currents are created by the heat escaping from the inner core, which then causes the iron to move and generate strong electrical currents. As the globe spins on its axis, a magnetic field is created. Magnetic fields not only enable compasses to function, but they also safeguard planets by deflecting charged particles, known as solar wind and cosmic radiation, from outer space. The ozone layer is our main defense against dangerous UV radiation, but these particles could destroy it. A planet's ability to maintain an atmosphere may rely on the strength of its magnetic field. The repeated radio signal detected coming from the exoplanet YZ SETI B led astronomers to believe that the planet might be habitable. The signal was strong enough to be picked up from a great distance using the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array Telescope, suggesting that the planet has a robust magnetic field. This teaches us fresh information about the environment around stars. The importance of this discovery can be better grasped by taking into account the function of the Earth's magnetic field. The Sun's charged particles are drawn to Earth's magnetic field, where they crash with oxygen and nitrogen molecules high in the atmosphere. The greenish-blue light produced by these impacts is the aurora borealis, 
often known as the Northern Lights. The magnetic field of the Earth is invisible to the naked eye, and this phenomenon is the only visible representation of it. According to a recent study, scientists believe that the observed signals are the consequence of interactions similar to those that cause aurora borealis, and thus they have dubbed these radio waves auroral radio emissions. The magnetic field of YZ SETI B can deflect some of the charged particles emitted by YZ SETI, allowing them to interact with the star. The radio waves we pick up on Earth are generated by an aurora on the star itself, which is caused by this interaction. If the planet has its own atmosphere, aurora should also be present. Since YZ SETI B orbits its star once every two days, these interactions and the accompanying radio waves occur often. Planets so close to their stars that we wouldn't dare call them habitable also happen to be plowing through debris ejected from the star. The star will let out strong radio waves if the planet's magnetic field plows through enough of the star's material. This discovery presents researchers with a valuable opportunity to assess whether magnetic fields on other planets may truly be observed from Earth. Magnetic fields are famously difficult to recognize due to their invisibility, making it difficult to ascertain whether or not the planets they surround are habitable. In light of its rocky composition, Earth-like size, and possible magnetic field, YZ SETI B stands out as a promising candidate for a habitable exoplanet. Of course, aliens are another potential explanation for these baffling transmissions. A recent supernova has sparked speculation among scientists that aliens may use it to make contact with Earth as early as 2029. Aliens have a unique place in popular culture, serving as both symbols of hope for the future and warnings of impending disaster for Earth. Our young species will be at the mercy of their extraterrestrial whims if they are ever able to come, which suggests they are far more technologically advanced than we are. Depending on whether or not they are a friend or foe, those whims may be entertaining. It's possible that fiction will soon no longer be the only place where aliens and humans communicate. It's important to savor the relative ease of your current situation because much might change in just a few short years. All of us will be staring down the barrel of immortality by the year 2029, if Ray Kurzweil is correct, and his track record is very excellent so far. With your newfound immortality, you could spend your time chatting with aliens. That's what researchers Riley Derrick and Howard Isaacson found in their recent study. When we consider the immense number of stars and worlds in the observable universe, it starts to feel fairly bizarre that we haven't found anyone else yet. There should be millions of other civilizations out there waiting to be discovered, even if life is extremely uncommon. Still, the issue of their whereabouts lingers. Perhaps we're the only sentient beings in the universe, a lone complex entity in an otherwise lifeless world. It's also possible that aliens are constantly zipping through the galaxy and have no interest in communicating with humanity. Perhaps the most obvious explanation for our perceived loneliness is the expanse of space and time itself. Our signals must first reach an extraterrestrial intelligence before we can have a conversation with it, and the time it takes for those signals to travel is constrained by the universal speed limit, the speed of light. It takes the same length of time for the other end if there is someone to receive our signals, to send a reply back to us. Since we only placed the call a cosmic second ago, the intergalactic operator may not have had time to connect us yet which would explain why we haven't heard from anyone. When humanity's first chance to communicate with its extraterrestrial neighbors finally arrives, we will enter a new era, one in which contact with alien life is not only possible, but highly likely. Voyager 1 is the starting point for everything. It was a voyage that would span decades, if not forever, when the first Voyager spacecraft lifted out in 1977, carrying a golden record an ambassador to the stars. For nearly four decades, Voyager 1 explored the solar system before finally leaving the heliosphere in 2012. Within this region of space, the effects of the solar wind are felt strongly. 
It's a means to specify the limits of the solar system and its environs. Voyager 1 is still functioning, both sending and receiving signals approximately 50 years after its launch. However, these transmissions continue even after they reach the spaceship. Instead, they continue racing off in the direction Voyager is going, where they might come into contact with intelligent life. The journeys of Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11 and New Horizons were tracked by Derek and Isaacson. The Gaia catalog of nearby stars was then used to detect potential intersections between our signals and any intelligent life out there. They were able to pinpoint target stars and determine when signals would arrive there. The researchers looked at the direction of the signals, identified any possible habitable stars along the route, and calculated how long it would take for an intelligent civilization to hear our messages and respond. Radio waves lose strength and become more difficult to pick up as they propagate into space. Aliens parked, orbiting a nearby star, probably won't detect the faint leaking from TVs and other small electronics. NASA's Deep Space Network is a global array of radio dishes designed for space communications, but the commands we send to the pioneering probes at the edge of the solar system, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, and New Horizons, require a much more focused and powerful broadcast. The transmissions from deep space networks do not magically terminate at the ship they are aimed at, but travel through space to other stars. Distances in the universe are measured in light years because electromagnetic waves like radio transmissions and light have a finite speed. To calculate how long it would take for deep space network signals to travel to nearby stars and for alien life to reply, the researchers relied on this physical principle. Several discoveries were made during the procedure. For instance, they determined that a signal sent to Pioneer 10 in 2002 had arrived at a white dwarf, a type of dead star, located around 27 light years away. If there is alien life in the area of this dead star, the research team thinks we might receive a reply as early as 2029 at the earliest. In the coming decade, more channels will open up for two-way communication. In 2007, signals from two stars, a 26 light-year away star and a 24 light-year away brown dwarf, that were delivered to Voyager 2 during 1980 and 1983 were received. If the aliens replied immediately from either, their communication would reach Earth sometime around 2030. Derek and Isaacson suggest radio astronomers utilize star catalogs to wait for replies at scheduled intervals. In 2029, for instance, scientists on Earth may choose to direct some of the planet's most powerful radio telescopes at the White Dwarf that was the recipient of Pioneer 10's transmission. But some other astronomers have doubts. If a response were to be transmitted, our capacity to identify it would depend on numerous circumstances. The length of time the return signal is broadcast and how often we check the star for a response are two such variables. Our radio signals have scarcely penetrated a millionth of the Milky Way's mass. It would arrive in around six years if someone read our message in 2002 and hurriedly responded. Even if the initial window of opportunity is missed, the study identifies five potential rendezvous points between the spacecraft between now and 2257. It's only a matter of time before someone responds, and it might happen at any moment. Let's simply cross our fingers and hope that the person who answers is someone we can get along with. When pondering the possibility of extraterrestrial life, much remains unknown. Although it's hardly the most compelling argument for cutting emissions, experts say doing so could prevent an alien race from launching a preemptive attack on Earth. Changes in Earth's atmosphere could be seen by alien observers as a sign of a civilization spiraling out of control prompting them to take dramatic measures to stop humanity from becoming a greater menace. Contact with cooperative organisms that help humans progress knowledge and alleviate global challenges like hunger, poverty, and disease is only one example of the many positive outcomes that have resulted from these encounters.
The researchers also consider a scenario in which mankind defeats a more formidable alien aggressor or is rescued by a second race of extraterrestrials. Other sorts of near encounters may be less beneficial and leave much of human culture feeling ambivalent toward alien life. It's possible that aliens are just too different from us to have any meaningful conversations with. If aliens, even accidentally, inflicted harm on Earth's population, the results would be catastrophic. In addition to being eaten, enslaved or attacked by aliens, humans also run the risk of being physically squished or infected by alien-born diseases. The accidental release of an unfriendly artificial intelligence or the conduct of a catastrophic physics experiment that renders a region of the galaxy uninhabitable are two ways in which a highly sophisticated civilization could wipe out humanity. Some scientists are advocating for prudence while broadcasting signals into space in order to increase humanity's chances of survival. In particular, they are warning against broadcasting information about our biological makeup, as this could be exploited to create weapons that specifically target humans. But isn't it kind of late now? Let's just cross our fingers that any aliens that hear our signals don't decide to consume, enslave, attack, poison, experiment with disastrous physics, or release hostile AI on us. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.